right, here we go. Today we have legendary WWE wrestler Maven Huffman. Welcome to Vlad TV. Well, thanks for having me. The fact that you started off with legendary, I might offer a little bit of pushback, but I'll take it. Hey. I'll take it. Thank you. I think you're legendary. Oh, thank I'm sure you. some of my viewers will think you're legendary also. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, it's your first time. I want to start in the very beginning. So you were born in Tennessee, but you moved when you were a couple of months old to uh, Cremora, Virginia? Yeah, I'm, I'm shocked you got that. The bigger town, if you can even call it bigger, was Waynesboro, Virginia. Um, it's about, and everybody now that Charlottesville's on the map, it's about a half an hour from Charlottesville. Small, very rural town in Virginia. But yeah, Cremora was was the town that I that I lived in. I mean, I'm talking my elementary school had 200 students in it and I was the only only one with with this with this skin tone. Well, what nationality are you? Just found out. You with, just found with out. With the yeah, I went 40 seven years of my life having no clue. It, huh. it would always depend. If I was down in Florida, people thought I was Cuban. Right. When I'm in New York, people would think I was Dominican. Yeah. And when I was in Virginia, I was just black. But I my, never knew my birth father, my biological father. But I did a DNA test recently and come to find out my mother was of German descent and my father was Nigerian. Okay, so, so you're mixed, black and white. Mixed, yeah. But you didn't know that? No clue. My whole, wow. I just I just always saw the curly hair and I just always assumed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? It was something that I never really cared about. It just never mattered. Like what like what was it gonna it wasn't gonna change anything. It wasn't gonna make my life any better or any worse if I if I knew. So just never never really cared. Well, when you were two years old, your dad left the family. Well, no, nah, my dad was never a part of the family. Never part of the family. Never part. So of your the parents family. were never married. Never. No. Okay. From what I understand, I was the uh, byproduct of an of an adulterous relationship. Oh, so he had a wife. He had a fa yeah. He had okay. a family. He had. He was doing his thing. Uh, I could pass him on the street. I wouldn't know it. I've never seen a picture of the man. Huh. Don't care to. So you never wanted to like look him up. Never. And, no. Okay. Never. Fair enough. Yeah. To hell with him. Okay, but after your dad left, your mom took her own life. She did. When, when we moved back from Nashville, it was probably a few months. My mom, the stories that I have, and again, I'm getting it from second and third hand accounts. My mom moved to Nashville from the Virginia, from Waynesboro, Virginia, just for opportunity. I, I heard she was a singer. I definitely did not get that gene, but I heard she went out there, you know, chasing a dream like most people. Um, and what she found was my biological father. Again, he had a family, so he was up for a good time, but wasn't, you know, wasn't interested in definitely a second secondary family. So when she moved back to Virginia, I mean, I'm I'm always assumed that just times were very tough for her. You know, she moved back to Virginia, um, unemployed, didn't you know, was probably chasing employment, and in the '70s, the you know mid to late '70s, Virginia's a very different place than it is right now, especially when you have a biracial kid. Right. And I'm sure you'll get into it with my adoptive mom, but I remember asking my adoptive mom two weeks before she passed in 04 what the hardest thing about raising me was. And she would always say the looks I would get in a grocery store. Cool. And she was like, you know, all, because the minute, you know, there's this little, you know, black curly haired kid running around and a white lady, people are going to cast assumptions. They're going to think that they know the story. Well, you got adopted by your aunt and uncle? I, yes. So when my mom took her life, she asked her brother a few, I think, I want to say probably a few months before. She took her life the day after Christmas in 78. And a few months prior to that, she asked her brother, her youngest brother, my it's weird, and it's weird to say, he's my dad now, but my Uncle Fred and his wife, Sherma, if anything ever happens to me, will you take, take Maven? They said yes, and yeah, they became mom and dad. It's the only family I've ever had, only you know, parents I've ever known. So, you know, so when you ask me if I ever have any interest in finding my father, no, I, had, I, I had a dad growing up, and it, it – there was, I never felt like there was ever anything in my life that I was missing by not, not having 
you know, my biological father in my life. Now, I mean, the older I get, you know, I'd love to maybe know if there's anything medically I should be, you know, looking out for. Or, the only thing I've, I've, like I've said my whole life, the only thing I'm 100% sure of is that he was devastatingly handsome. That's it. That's <laughs> all. Well, do you know any of the details over your mom taking her life? Was it depression, mental illness? Did something happen? It's, I've always assumed, all right, it, it's, it's weird. In my family, there's a section of my family that actually doesn't think she took her life. Oh, someone killed her? They think. And the reason being, and I actually still have the gun. I have the gun that, that she took her life with. Oh, she used the gun on herself. She did. Oh. But there, but from what I, and again, from what I've heard, there were more than one gun. It was more than one gunshot. There was three gunshots. And how do you kill yourself three yeah. times? And from what I hear, from what I've heard, one of the wounds was, this makes it sound like it was a defensive wound, through, through her hand. Yeah, it's it's crazy. But and the reason that I've always accepted the suicide is she did. She wrote a note. She wrote a letter to my father. And you asked about depression. Yeah, she was battling, battling major depression prior to it. So I, I don't know. I've always wondered if maybe she was maybe she was hitting up my biological father for money and I don't, I don't know if he decided I'm not going to, I'm obviously not going to pay. I'm not going to have you find out and ruin my family. But I do know, cause I've seen her handwritten letter. I do know she was, she was going through a very, a very, very difficult time. Yeah. I'm sorry. You had to, uh, you know, sorry you went through that. I mean, in your own way, obviously you didn't know her, um, but, yeah, it, it's weird. I've always, my first memory, my first childhood memory is when I turned three. I remember my, my grandmother giving me a bank, like a little piggy bank. And I figured that was during Christmas. Um, I figured I, I, I was about nine to 10 months away from being able to have any memories because I have no memories of my biological mom. Yeah, I mean, who remembers stuff when they're two? Exactly. Anyway, it's, it's normal. Okay, so now you're growing up. And your uncle and, and his wife yes. are, are raising you. So were you a, a good kid? Did you get in trouble? Ever get arrested? I, I later in life I did, but growing up I was a I was a I was a good kid. Okay. I never I mean, I got into the stuff that normal kids get into. I didn't wasn't a fan of doing homework. Uh, you know, I was the I was the kid that in every in every report card that my teacher sent home, they checked the box, needs to exercise self-control. <laughs> if they had Ritalin out back then, I probably would have been a prime candidate for it. But, I mean, as, as for, I was a good kid. 